Hey everybody, welcome back to Brainiac Baseball's 1971 Seattle Pilots What If Scenario. Today's matchup is between the Washington Senators and the Seattle Pilots at Brainiac Stadium. On the mound for the Senators today is Joe Coleman, whose record is 0-1 with a 1246 ERA. And pitching for the Pilots is Dave Boswell, whose record is 1-0 with a 3.38 ERA. Okay, we got it handed to us yesterday by the Twins, 17-2. We probably could have cut that run total in half or so, uh, but we decided to uh, go with uh, one particular bullpen arm to kind of take all that abuse um, instead of uh, you know forcing all of our bullpen to play uh, in that game. We do have another six games in a row. Before we get the day off, so we tagged uh, Geldar as the pitcher who's going to absorb all those runs scored. And so he does have two days until he's rested. And since he is one of the few pitchers on our team that is able to go down to the minors, we dropped him down to AAA and we called up Ron Locke, who you may remember was outstanding last year and also in the expansion here for the pilots uh, in our sim we got him in a trade with the mets who at the point at that point had not been in major league baseball for five years and you know he's been great for us and the only reason he's not on the roster this year is because he's not on a major league deal um, we were just waiting for an opportunity to bring him up ramon hernandez will not be available so essentially you know we could swap this ron Locke. And all of these pitchers will be available today. Ramon Hernandez will be not uh, available. But he does have that check mark, which is my way of designating that a player's on a major league deal and cannot participate. Uh, in, uh, not get sent down to the minor leagues is what I'm trying to say. So um, we're going to go ahead and get today's game started against the Senators. Uh, we will do a deep dive on Joe Coleman, who's pretty fascinating, actually. Let's go to get today's game started. As always, I appreciate everyone following along, like and or subscribe to the channel, please. Um, we did do a video earlier today. I did an I Got This video where I showed you some of the cards that I've picked up in the last couple of weeks, which includes some 1975 and 76 Tops baseball checklists, as well as a, a huge lot of 49 1979 Tops football which was a lot of fun. So uh, that video will be posted uh, at the end of this video if you want to stick around and wait for it. Uh, Dave Boswell, you'll see, he's put up some pretty good numbers. He's coming off a shutout of his own, and he has pitched well against the Senators up till now. Joe Coleman, he's been terrible this year, uh, so he's probably due to have a couple of games shutout of his own. And this is our lineup today. We got all the good guys back in there, trying to get a, a victory. Okay, let's go ahead and do the lineup rundown for the Washington Senators. Some names you may be familiar with. Batting leadoff at third base is Toby Hera. Batting second, at second base is John Donaldson. Batting third at first base is Larry Bittner. Batting cleanup in left field is Gene Martin. Batting fifth and catching is Jim French. Batting sixth in right field is Jose Vidal. Batting seventh in center field is Del Unser. Batting eighth at shortstop is Ed Brinkman. And batting ninth is the pitcher Joe Coleman. All right, let's take a look here at Dave Boswell making his third start of the year. 1-0 with a 338 ERA, nine strikeouts and 13 and a third innings pitched. Poster betting 245 against him. He does have that complete game shutout, which came in his last start. Fastball topping out at 89 miles an hour. Ground ball percentage very high at 54.4%. The slow curve is his best pitch rated in 89 and a good fastball rated in 81. Overall rated in 84. The 26-year-old righty is a free agent at the end of the 1974 season. There's his log if you got to look at it. 
That complete game shutout. Four hitter with a walk. Less than 100 pitches against the Red Sox. Not so hot in that first game versus Minnesota, which was on opening day. Okay, we'll take a look here at our lineup in uh, defensively. Uh, we do have Peppertone in right field, not so great. Devannon is back at shortstop today and behind home plate. After a day off is Manny Sanguian. Here's Toby Hara leading it off for the Senators. Toby Hara wasn't even a rookie until the 1972 season, so he's up early. Flying out the left center field, one out. John Donaldson signed as a free agent. He was playing for Oakland last year. You see him on the Pilots card. That was his real card, not one that I made. And he's going to get a base at the center field. Is he going to go for two? Nope. He'll be held to a single. Runner on first, one out. Got four left-handers in a row. Here's the next one, Larry Bittner, as Donaldson steals second. His first stolen base of the year. Runner in scoring position. I've said this many times, but as a kid collecting baseball cards, like around the 19th, whenever he was on the Cubs, Larry Bittner, and I would get a card, I'd be like, oh, they made an error. They, how could he have two I's and two T's in a row? And I always thought that was a spelling error. I was a dumb kid. Fly ball to center field. But you also have to remember we didn't have um, interleague play, so I never actually saw the Cubs play. So for all I knew, that was a, that was a spell year. Here's Gene Martin. He must be filling in in left field. No, he's played in all 10 games. I don't know. That's weird. But he's a guy that um, has been only used as a pinch hitter up till now. Batting cleanup. 95 power. And there's his second home run of the year. 2 nothing, Washington. Bases are clear. As French gets a double. All right. So, yeah, this is the game where Boswell gives up a ton of runs after pitching a shutout. And Joe Coleman will be the opposite. He'll pitch the shutout with that 12 ERA. Yeah, there's nothing we can do about it. Jose Vidal, who was on the Pilots. Wait, how did he score a run? Oh, that was a double. Oh, yeah, there's nothing we can do. We'll just get this game over with now. All right. Three runs by the Senators. Let's take a look at our lineup. Batting leadoff at second base is Tito Fuentes. Batting second and catching is Manny Sanguian. Batting third in left field is Jose Cruz. Batting cleanup at first base is Darren Johnson. Batting fifth at first, I'm sorry, in right field actually, is Joe Pepitone. Batting sixth in center field is Tommy Agee. Batting seventh at third base is Aurelio Rodriguez. Batting eighth at shortstop is Jerry Devannon. And batting ninth, if he gets there, is Dave Boswell. Okay, Joe Coleman, let's talk about him for a moment. He was the third overall pick in 1965. That's the very first ever uh, amateur draft. Picked in front of him, the number one pick was Rick Monday for Oakland, and the number two pick for the Mets was Les Rohr. Coleman was the first pick ever to be signed, and he was the first pick ever to make it to the major leagues. In 1970, in real life, he was traded to Detroit, my Tigers, with Aurelio Rodriguez, who's on our pilots, in exchange for Denny McLean and some other people. Denny McLean, an important pitcher uh, during the 60s for the Tigers, but by then, McLean had gambling issues and drinking issues, carousing issues, all kinds of issues, and so the Tigers were looking to unload him. We got Joe Coleman in the deal. What does he do? 1971, the season that we're playing. He goes 20 and 9 with a 3.15 ERA. In 1972, he's an all star going 19 and 14 with a 280 ERA. And in 1973 for the Tigers, 
He goes 23 and 15 with a 3.53 ERA. He stuck around. He played for 15 total years in the major leagues. After his playing career, he was a, a coach for Joe Torre's Cardinals, and he coached the minors uh, for a while as well. You look at him right here. You can see he's off to a bad start. That's about to be changed completely. Uh, he's gone eight and two third innings. He's giving up fifteen. I'm uh, sorry, thirteen runs. Twelve of those were earned. He's only struck out six, and the people are batting uh, 390 against him. Come on. His fastball topping out at 89 miles an hour. Ground ball percentage is 44%. Fastball is the only good pitch he has, rated an 87, with a secondary fork ball just below league average. Overall rated an 88. The 24-year-old righty is arbitration eligible after this year. There's his, wow, this is terrible numbers. He gave up 10 runs in three and two thirds. And usually the next start would be the bounce back. That's just not the case. I mean, he didn't pitch horribly, but he did get yanked after 79 pitchers, pitches versus the Indians. Kind of shocking. All right, we'll take a look here at the defense for the Senators. Right field is a problem defensively with Jose Vidal. Infield is pretty good considering. And behind home plate, maybe the best everyday catcher in the league, Jim French. He's got a 91 rating arm. And Tito Fuentes leading it off. Keep you count. Oh, God, this game is so over. I mean, literally, we could just push the button. Manny Sanguian, after a day off, gets a base hit. There is nothing we're going to be able to do today, though. Cruz popping up. And Darren Johnson striking out. Top of the second. Here's the pitcher. Coleman, he's got to get a hit. Yep. Oh, no. Ground ball to short. One up. Back to Toby Hara. Another hit. Yep. Ground ball to short. Error. Yep. And JD. There's that hit. I knew the... Everybody goes to left field, of course, because that's exactly the way all baseball players hit. Donaldson gets his next stolen base, and it's 4-0. Oh, ground ball to short again. Okay. Bottom of the second. This is going to be a complete game shutout. Everybody hitting it to the left side. Baseball mogul for you. Great job, baseball mogul. Six ground balls in a row to the left side. And we got a walk. Awesome. Yeah, ripped into the right field. There we go. Moving it around at least. Nobody out. That'll make it 4 to nothing. This will make it 5 to nothing. Oh, and first base tags up with a 88 rating. That makes sense. There's the strikeout. We're back to the pitcher. He strikes out. Awesome. Good job, baseball mogul. 23 runs now. Scored against us in 12 innings. You've got to love it. Nothing we can do to stop it. Oh, uh, no. Dave Boswell. He gets a double. They wanted to trick us into a triple. We didn't fall for it. We know pitchers only get doubles. They never get singles. And that's stupid as shit. As Tito Fuentes gets a hit. He'll be thrown out a second. No, he's going to beat it out. That's his first double of the year. Who'd have thunk it? Well, there goes the shutout. I guess we're wrong on that. Yeah, we're going to get a second one here. Oh, jeez. Out at home with a fucking 69 arm in left field with a 90% chance of scoring. That's how you know the game is truly over. God, I hate this game. It sucks so hard. What a bunch of colossal bullshit. 
Can't score on that. It's not even into the outfield. Oh, okay, there, there he goes scoring. A catcher scores from second on a hit that goes 146 feet. Baseball mogul blows bear nuts. This game seriously is bullshit. I mean, we knew this was going to happen. So we can't really be all that surprised. It's just the way that it goes down every time. Just total shit. Yay, the best defender in the game commits an error. How many runs are they going to get? Yeah, great job, baseball mogul. He's given up one. That's all he's got to give up, right? There's a blooper. Devannon coming through. But otherwise, if there wasn't two outs, he would never have got this hit. Because now it's going to force me to make a decision on Boswell. That's the only reason it happened. That would never happen otherwise. We have to let him bat because we do need... Um, to get another inning out of him. He's already got the one hit. He'll never get another hit. So we may as well try to have him, well, no, 63% chance to steal with that catcher behind the plate. I mean, we, we're damned if we do, we're damned if we don't. Hey, okay, made contact. All right. And now he's going to get clobbered. Hunter pitches now. Yeah, another loss for Dave Boswell. Bottom of the fifth. Yeah, we will not get another hit this game. All right. Um, well, we got lefties coming up, so we'll let him try to get one more. He does. Six strikeouts in five and a third. I guess that is something. Hey, we're going to see Ron Locke. That is good news, right? Ron Locke back from AAA. I mean, he's got a fastball rated in 81. That's all he's got, but he's always been so good. I mean, he might be, oh, Jesus Christ. He might be the best player we've traded for uh, in this game. He does give up a double to Donaldson, who's already got two hits and two stolen bases. Now we'll get him to third. Oh, no. Oh, I, I forgot about the strikeout. All right. Bottom of the sixth. Just trying to get it over. AG will steal so he can get thrown out. Yeah, here come the righties. Good job by Ron Locke, I guess. Ray Ray Peters. He's not good. But I like his glasses. And I, I've said this before, I mean, we really got to get through a month before I make real decisions about who's staying and who's going. And I don't, you know, as far as our pitching staff goes. And we really have to get to, like, the halfway point of the year before we bring up uh, Dennis Leonard and Dick Ruthven. You may remember, Ruthven was pretty good last year in September as a September call-up. But Dennis Leonard was terrible. So, you know, just ready, not ready for prime time.
we, we have not had another hit since I said we would not get another hit. I really thought this was going to be a complete game shutout. But I suppose if you only give up two runs after having a 10-run game, you can feel pretty good about yourself. Dick. We're going to bring in Dick. Dick's been bad, too. I mean, they're up three runs. Is he going to bunt? I wouldn't think so. We'll bring the corners in. Bunted. Round ball to third. And we do get the lead runner at second. I mean, why not? You've got the best defender out there committing errors. All right. Tito! There's your in-game stats. Same game. Couple of hits today. All right. I mean, there was no doubt Joe Coleman was going the distance today. Uh, we got some lefties, so out comes Raditz. Good job by him, though. Um, let's bring in Riddleberger. He has yet to give up a run, and he's really overdue. So let's have him give up a couple runs here in a game which uh, we were going to lose anyway. Yeah, I mean, it has to happen. It's the only way the game works. Lefty on lefties, you wouldn't think they would have any chance. But naturally, they will in this game because, like I said, he's got to give up the runs. He's got a case of the runs. Three consecutive left-handed hits. There's nothing we can do, so we just have to sit back and let the game punish him. And then he might not give up any runs for quite a while. Four batters before he finally gets it out. And now it's the weak-hitting shortstop. We'll pull the infield in. But he's going to have a sack fly. <laughs> it's so fucking predictable. That's how garbage baseball mogul is. Oh, he's not going to get a complete game out of it. They're going to pinch hit him. 7-2, to two, that's your final score. They're bringing in Casey Cox. Maybe his first year, right, since uh, out of spring training uh, on this team. So good for him. He's kind of earned his way into the bullpen. It doesn't matter. This means absolutely nothing. There's the double play, and here's the ball game. Tigers lose 7-2. to Game was over before it ever started. Another piece of shit baseball mogul game. Simulating. Uh, I did go through and make I'm sure every player was um, marked... You know, uh, you know, for trading, except for our two pitchers in the minor leagues that we care about and Dave Parker. Otherwise, everybody else is eligible to be traded. Oh, I'm still thinking about it. Just punishing us for all this garbage. Okay, well, we lost three. So we lost, we went, we won the opening day. We lost four, we won three, we lost three. Great job, baseball mogul. Um, we'll take a look here at the National League, I guess. There you go. San Francisco, nine and two. That's, that's a good start. Headline news, Brainiac Baseball Daily Beat. Nobody cares. Ah, uh, transactions. Yankees pitcher Hal Reniff. A forearm fracture for five days? He fractured his arm. <laughs> what the? F and Jim McKee. Blurry. All right, let's pull up the box score and get out of here. Not safe for work language today. I think you can understand.
Thessalonians in two days because the game has to get the ERAs back. So now Boswell goes from a 338 to almost a 5 because he had to. So his next start will be good. Joe Coleman goes eight innings, giving up only two runs. His ERA dropped from 1250 to 750. So you know his next start is going to be great. We had two extra base hits, including one by the frickin' pitcher. And uh, their offense was unstoppable, despite having less wins than we did. Coming into the ball game, 14 hits. Oh, I wanted to mention yesterday's game. We gave up the 17 runs. Our pitchers walked eight batters in, in giving up 17 runs. Did not strike out one batter the whole game. Eight walks, no strikeouts. Great programming baseball mogul. Okay, we'll come back tomorrow, play another piece of shit game. Until then, everyone, have a good one.